Hello students, today we're going to look at section 3.6, which is equations in y equals mx plus b form. <coughs> Excuse me. Up to this point, we've looked at equations in y equals mx form. A couple of things we knew about them is that m was the slope. <coughs> we also knew that this was called direct variation. Some of us figured out that a y equals mx equation is proportional, so we could set up proportionals to find the answer, proportions to find the answer. <coughs> and the other characteristic of a y equals mx, plus, mx form of an equation is it always passes through 0, 0, which is the origin. So if I had an equation y equals mx and I graphed that line, I would see that it always passed through the origin. It would look something like this. If that's my x-axis and my y-axis, it would always pass through the origin, something like that. Okay? That's for y equals mx. Now we're going to add to this, and we're going to look at the form of y equals mx plus b. Okay? m is still the slope. b is different, and b is the y-intercept, which is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Now, why don't you push pause right quick so you can finish writing all of that down. I'll say it again. Y equals mx plus b. M is still the slope, just like it always is, but b is the y-intercept, and that's the point where the line that I'm graphing passes through the y-axis. I guess I should have moved my camera a little bit earlier. Sorry about that. So take a pause, finish writing all of that down, and then we'll come back and look at something different. So now that we have that written down, let's do a quick comparison, okay? So if I have y equals mx plus b form, m is still my slope, but this is not direct variation, okay? Because it has the plus b there, it is not direct variation, okay? It's not proportional. Because I have that plus b right there, again, that makes it not proportional. If I didn't have a plus b, it'd be proportional, but since I don't, since I have a plus b, it's not proportional, okay? Another comparison, passes through the origin, it does not pass through the origin. And those are three very important things to make sure you understand between these two types of equations. Know the difference between a y equals mx equation and a y equals mx plus b. So this uh, line could look something like this. It doesn't have to, but here's one example. It could look something like this, where that blue line did not pass through the origin. Or I could have this brown line do something like that. And the brown line didn't pass through the origin either. So those are in y equals mx plus b form. And here's the cool thing. That's the b for the brown line. It's the point where the brown line crosses the y-axis. And for this blue line, that point is gonna be right here because that is the point where this line crosses the y-axis. So now that we know those characteristics, that a y equals mx plus b is not direct variation, it's not proportional, and it does not pass through the origin, we can look at how do we write the equation of the line for, these, for uh, um, these different situations where it doesn't pass through the origin and such. Here's the first example of us writing an equation from information that they give us, okay? They tell us, and you do not need to write this down. It's fine if you don't write this down. I think you're gonna catch on so quickly. You don't need to write this whole problem down. Write the equation of a line that has a slope of negative three and a y-intercept of four. Well, the slope is negative 3, so that means m equals negative 3. And the y-intercept is 4, which means that b equals 4. 
because B is that y-intercept. I don't know why they call it B. It's crazy. Just like I don't know why they call slope M has nothing to do with it. We just, that's what we live with, okay? So I need to plug both of these into the equation y equals mx plus b. Well, I know m is negative 3, so y equals negative 3x, and b is 4, and it's a positive 4 because there's no negative. It's a positive 4, so I have to say plus 4. Okay? So if they tell me that a slope is negative 3 and the y-intercept is 4, then my equation is y equals negative 3x plus 4. Simple as that. So I'm just going to erase a few things. And we're going to change this up a little bit. What if that my slope is negative one half, and the y-intercept, or the passage of the y-intercept is at uh, negative seven? So m is negative one half, b is negative seven. So I'm going to plug those things in just like I did. So y equals m is negative one half x, and b is negative seven. So I don't have to put the plus sign; I just put minus seven because it's negative seven. So the equation of this line would be y equals negative one half x minus seven. I'm taking the information that they're giving me, plugging it in to create an equation. So now I'm given this table. It's these table of values, 0, 5, 2, 9, 4, 13, and 6, 17. And I need to come up with the equation of a line. So I need to find m and I need to find b in order to write my equation. Well, m is the slope, but it's also the same thing as the constant rate of change. And when I'm given a table, I always find the constant rate of change. So I have to figure out what's my change in y's and my change in x's. So if I'm going from five to nine, I had to add four. And if I'm going nine to 13, I have to add four. And if I'm going from 13 to 17, I have to add four. So it looks like it is a constant rate of change. From zero to two, I add two. From two to four, I add two. And from four to six, I add two. So yeah, I, just in case you haven't already, I do want you to write down this table, and I do want you to write down the information that I'm doing on this table. So if you need to hit the pause button right now to write this down, please do, okay? So to find my M, I take my change in Y over my change in X. So the change in Y is four, over the change in x, which is 2, and I simplify that, and I get 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I know that my m is 2, okay? Now the b is a little different story, okay? So here's something you need to catch. For b, the y-intercept always has an x value of 0. Okay, the x value is always zero. Okay, so for my y-intercept, I'm looking for a point that has an x value of zero. And whatever the x value of zero is and the y is, I didn't say that right. So whatever the y value is when x is zero is my b. Okay, so let's look over here. Do I have an x value that's zero? Why, absolutely. It's right there. So if my x is 0 and y is 5, then 5 is my b. It's as simple as that. I look to see where x is 0, and that's my b. So now I have my slope, and I have my b. So my equation is y equals 2x plus 5. Because the y and the x are always going to be there. I'm always going to have the y, I'm always going to have an x, just like when we did the last video, we had the y and the x. That's the equation of the line. Again, I found my constant rate of change for the slope, and then I found where x equals 0, that y value is b, so y equals 2x plus 5. I want to do another one of these examples with you because finding the equation from a table is the, really the trickiest part, okay? So, again, I need to find m, and I need to find b. Well, to find m, i got to find my constant rate of change. So let's look at the rate of change. To get from 0 to negative 2, I had to subtract 2. From negative 2 to negative 4, I had to subtract 2. And from negative 4 to negative 6, I had to subtract 2. Now, if my y's from 8 to 12, I added 4. From 12 to 16, I added 4. And from 16 to 20, I added 4. So to find my slope, or m, I'm going to do the change in y's 
over the change in x's. And I get the change in y's is 4 over the change in x's, which is negative 2. And I do 4 divided by negative 2, and that equals negative 2. Okay? It's not hard. It's just a little process that we have to go through. Now, B, if you'll remember, I stumbled through it a while ago. I'm looking for where x is 0, and the y value is going to be my B. So do I have an x is 0? Absolutely. Right here, x is 0, y is, B, y is 8, so my B equals 8. Again, because the point 0, 8 on a graph is on the y-axis, so x is always going to be 0 for my y-intercept. Now I know my slope and my y-intercept, so the equation of my line is y equals negative 2x plus 8. That's it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am given a graph. Okay? I don't expect you to write this graph down because it's kind of cantankerous, but I just need you to pay close attention, and you're going to write down the m and the b, and then you're going to be able to figure this out. Okay? If you want to draw the graph, it would be helpful. Okay, you can, but you don't have to. All right? So m and b, the slope and the y-intercept. Okay? First thing I need to do is find my slope. Well, I have two points on my line, so I could use rise over run. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start at the lowest point, and I have to rise one, two, three. And I have to run. I'm going to do the loops to make it eight. one, two, three. And then I have to run one, two. And that gives me a slope of three over two. So that's the first part. Now I have to find B. Where does this line, the brown line, cross the y-axis? Well, here's my y-axis because it go up, goes up and down. Where does the brown line cross? It crosses right here. Well, what number is that? If I start from the origin, I go down one, two, three. I went down three to get here. So that means that my y-intercept is negative three. If I want to label it, I could call this zero comma negative three. Notice that the x value is zero. So my b is negative three. And it's also negative three on the y-axis. So there's my m and my b. I plug them into my equation. y equals 3 over 2x minus 3. And that is the equation of my line. Simple as that. Find the y-intercept. Calculate the slope with rise over run. And voila! This is the equation of the line. So this brown line is formed because I plugged in numbers for x and y, and I got to form a line. And here are your two practice problems for this video. Okay, for both of them, I want you to write the equation of the line in y equals mx plus b form. The first one says that the slope is negative 3 and the y-intercept is negative 2. So give me the equation of the line for that information. The second one is a table that I'm giving you, and I need you to figure out what m is, find b, and then write that as an equation of a line. Take a picture of your practice problems and submit it through Edmodo. Hey folks, I'm just seeing if you watch the video to the very end. Because you never know what comes at the end of a movie. End of a great video. Could be a surprise. If you see this message, write the number four on your practice problems. Put a circle around the number four. And you earn four extra tickets for watching all the way to the end of the video. Don't tell anybody about this. Don't tell anybody. But if you get it, Put a four, put a circle around it, and you'll get four extra tickets for watching this video.